Okay, so I'm back at the bus. Uh, looks like that uh, paint dried pretty nicely. And uh, today's order of business is to cut plywood for the walls. I'm going to start putting it in place. And as I go, I will spray foam the cracks um, lightly with spray foam and make sure there's no air gaps or air cracks behind the plywood. Okay, so before I can lay out the uh, plywood and the wire chase and where the outlets are going, I need to use this window frame for the smaller windows to kind of mark on the insulation where the window is going to go. Uh, that way the plywood will be in the right place. So um, anyhow, that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so what I decided to do here is I'm going to cut 16 inches. Sorry almost tripped myself there. I'm going to cut 16 inch uh, rips at the bottom and then we're going to have a 48 inch sheet at the top and it'll finish up about right here somewhere in here. Um, so full sheet to save cuts. That'll minimize the amount of wasted material with the plywood walls. So I'm going to go start cutting the 16 inch pieces to form the base. I'll get them riveted in place. Just before riveting, I'll hit it with a little spray foam. Not too much. I don't want to expand the metal out on the outside of the skin or create a problem, but we'll uh, tense it up with some spray foam fresh behind the plywood right when I uh, put them in. So anyhow, it's time to rip uh, the plywood, get a few 16-inch, uh, 8-foot pieces, to, or 16-inch pieces, 8-foot long to start with the uh, bottom edge here. That will also uh, observe the... I think it's like five degree cant of the walls that starts right in here. The 16 inches will come up in here a little bit, but it won't come up so far that it's going to be a problem for the natural cant of the top part of the bus. So anyhow, I'm going to get at it with the cuts. Okay, so I've got a uh, floodlight mounted here. I'm using the trailer as a work table. Works out pretty well. Uh, I've got the sheet hanging over, weighted down with some uh, heavy bus jack stands here. Um, now I'm going to make my measurements and get to ripping wood. Okay, so you'll see I've uh, made a ripping fence here with a couple of clamps and I've got the circular saw over there. I know that the circular saw base plate is a inch and a half in width uh, from the edge of the blade. So uh, that makes a 16 inch cut measure out to 17 and a half from this rip fence that I've got clamped down so what will happen is I'll end up with a 16 inch piece because I'm actually cutting it that way along this or from from where I'm standing outward uh, with the thin side of that uh, circular saw base plate so going to uh, stop halfway through the cut and I'm going to move this step ladder under this corner to take the strain off the uh, plywood as I end up down here trying to finish the cut so it doesn't split. All right, so you can see that that uh, cut was pretty close to 16. Maybe a saw kerf difference, but we're not going to get them all perfect because it's only a 48 inch piece of wood, so the saw blade's width is going to come into play. So this is not a high precision need, just got to be real fairly close to 16 feet, or 16 inches, sorry. Okay, so I've got the next cut set up. Luckily, uh, I don't have to do a third cut per sheet since it's uh, divided by three here. I only need the two cuts and I've got three pieces at 16 inches. Okay, so I've got full four, or four full sheets and uh, three pieces of 16 inch width. So I'm going to do the three pieces on these full sheets of plywood here. One, two, and then over here, three, uh, we're going to throw some insulation behind this as I put that up. Um, but uh, the plan here is to put those in first, and then we'll figure out what, what the width needs to be for a piece here. And then we'll throw full sheets up, one, two, three, four. Um, I think the, the other thing I've got to consider here is the outlets. So... Uh, before I fasten the plywood, I'm going to need to cut for outlets and um, run some Romex, you know, into 
sort of a slot in the insulation is my plan. Uh, there'll be a couple of outlets sort of lower on this wall where the stove and fridge are going to go. Uh, and then I'll have a couple of outlets here by the sink. Those will be GFCI. And then uh, we'll have a couple of outlets down here for the entertainment center. Uh, those don't necessarily need to be um, recessed to look nice. They can be below the floor if I need them to be. Uh, but uh, I, I definitely need to consider where they're going to go. And uh, ultimately we'll have some up front, but they can run up higher in the chase up this way. So I've got a few, I've got a couple in the back where I'm going to do flush mount to the wall and two for the fridge and stove and then a couple here, a couple boxes where the sink's going to go, um, you know, for if we want to put the coffee maker there or whatever, so, or run a toaster there, whatever, whatever works, I guess. I just want to have outlets near the prep surface. So anyhow, that's the plan. Okay, so I've got these two boards placed. I had to cut a little off the end of that one. Um, just kind of holding them up against the wall. Now I'm going to get the river riveter set up and drill some rivet holes to uh, pop these in place. Okay, so I'm uh, fastening this plywood to the wall with some very long rivets that I got from Hanson Rivet in New Jersey, mail order. And uh, what I'm doing is... I'm recessing them by using a half inch twist bit to kind of create a scoop, a little recess in the uh, plywood. And then I drill it with the one quarter bit, this bit here, into the hat channel. And then I use the rivet gun to hold the plywood in. And then later I'm going to fill these holes when I parge the plywood for paint. Uh, certain parts of the bus will get, most likely get some kind of a, uh, finished wood stained wood kind of a treatment over top they will just uh air nail air nail in with brad nails or something like that but uh uh you know like quarter inch birch or something maybe the bedrooms i'll have to think about that but in the front we've decided we're going to do some kind of an off-white paint on the walls so i'm just going to use this plywood and uh finish it more smoothly with uh some kind of a wood filler or finish and then we'll paint it so Anyway, I'm going to fasten this to the wall. Okay, so this plan's coming together pretty well. As you can see, this really pulls it in tight, even with the insulation being a little bit uh, bulgy. I've got the spray foam in behind it. It should uh, squish things together as it expands. Hopefully it doesn't hurt any of the metal. That would be a tragedy. Uh, but i uh, got a couple more rivets to do, and then I'm going to call it quits for the night. You can see they're recessed. So that when I come over them with something like a wood, wood filler or I don't know what else, maybe some kind of a adhesive caulk I'll spread over this to sand, sandable adhesive caulk maybe. But that way we can uh, get these walls painted nice and flat and looking really smooth. So anyhow, I've got uh, four more rivets to do and then I'm done for the evening. You'll notice as well, I blocked them up with these two by fours so that I have a little bit of a channel for the wood and uh, possibly if I need to run any wiring under there, I got a little space to work with or just to, uh, I don't know, just seemed like uh, it, would, it would be good to have some space to pull these floor pieces up if I needed to. So I made it an inch and a half gap with a two by four. Okay, so at this point I've got the uh, First 16 inches of plywood on this side. I've proved the concept for fastening it to the hat channels. It's working well. Uh, nice and tight on the on the gaps here. So um, that'll actually squish the insulation some, make it nice and airtight uh, against the side of the bus. So, and this also will provide actually some structural support um, as tight as this is with the geometry here this actually will help strengthen the wall of the of the vehicle itself uh, with this three-quarter ply and all these rivets so I think the next step here I'm going to remove these temporary fasteners um, I probably should just use screws for those but I'll drill those out uh, because they're really not going to be needed the uh, 
the rivets are really sucking everything in. So um, I think tomorrow I'm going to hit the spray foam in the gaps and uh, and get the and I just keep going with this plywood. I'll get these full sheets put up. Um, I'll have to trim this one back for this edge, but uh, we'll, we'll keep going. Hopefully by end of the weekend after Thanksgiving here, I'll have this uh, all coated in plywood on the walls. So we'll see how far I get. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do right now is lay out the outlets that are going in the plywood. I'm going to lay them out on the wall. Uh, first, I'm going to actually cut out that window uh, in the foam with the oscillating tool. Hopefully, I'll be able to use that oscillating tool as well to cut out the outlet holes in the plywood. We'll see how well that goes. I might have to do uh, the drilling a hole and jigsaw method. But uh, anyhow, right now, I'm going to cut this window out with an oscillating tool through the foam. Just uh, to remove the foam, foam board, the metal will stay intact. I'm not ready to put windows in yet. Um, but then I'm going to lay out the recesses for, recesses for outlets, uh, and I will just mark them on the wall, and I'm going to use this tool that a gentleman named Troy, who watches my videos, recommended for different aspects of the project. This is a, an angle tool, angle finding tool, template layout tool, but uh, it has these knobs that let you set a particular angle, and what I'm going to do is use this to reference um from the corner where the plywood meets where these outlets are going so that i can cut the plywood and have them uh, meet up with where i'm going to dig into the, the insulation for a uh, romex cable to be laid laid down uh, behind the plywood so you'll see uh, as i as i progress here how that works but uh, this tool's uh, going to be very useful for that so thank you troy all right so the oscillating tool um was fairly useful for that wasn't the cleanest but i can clean it up with a razor blade when i'm ready to put the windows in um i just didn't want to have to try to do that with the, the plywood and everything else so um anyhow uh that is uh the first step here on this side uh next i'm going to move these pieces of plywood out of the way and i'm going to be marking a couple of outlet holes uh, on this wall section here uh, they're going to be closer to the end of the sink um, so that if we want to plug in a mixer or something on the drain board of the sink, then, uh, you know, we can we can do that. It's likely we use some cutting boards on that drain board as sort of a, a workspace or counter space uh, that we may set, you know, hand mix or set a bowl on to do hand mixing or whatever. So um, anyhow, uh, definitely want some outlets right there. Okay, so I've marked these two outlets. The reason I'm using single gang outlets is because I want every outlet on the bus, to most likely every outlet on the bus, except maybe a couple exceptions, to be home run all the way to the box. That's why I bought such a big box of uh, breakers so that uh, I could flip them on and off individually. Um, one of my pet peeves is kitchen outlets having you know, not enough juice to do what you're trying to do, whether you're running an electric roaster oven or, you know, and, and trying to boil water with a kettle at the same time, etc. You know, I, I don't like blowing breakers because too many outlets are on the same, uh, on the same uh, run. So, um, anyhow, that's uh, why I'm using single gang outlets. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, do the layout on the table outside for the plywood here that will um, it'll tuck under this backer board so I'm going to make some measurements there um, and, and cut a uh, cut a rectangle out of it I don't want to undo the backer board that's just too much uh, too much effort uh, there's going to be wall covering over that anyway but uh, um, at this point I'm going to go lay that plywood out including the layout of these boxes um, and they'll be referenced from that bottom corner. All right, so I just used this oscillating tool to sort of notch a channel out of the insulation. Um, that'll be big enough to hold the Romex or recess the Romex so that the uh, plywood can be put up against the wall. 
and I'm going to do that next one as well. And uh, actually, I was thinking about that outlet wrong. I don't need to cut another outlet before I hang this sheet, so I'll do that on the next one. Okay, so this is the outlet kind of rough fit in. We can tell we have enough of a gap for the three quarter plywood. It would be just about right. I do have to remember not to use too long of a screw um, to put these outlets in uh, because I don't want to puncture the Romex. But uh, it'll be surface mounted to the plywood after I cut a rectangle. So I got both of these ready at this point. That multi tool worked great for this. Um, just kind of shaved out the rectangles in the uh, insulation. So I've marked my uh, references six feet over and 12 feet over, 27 inches high to that line at the top of the outlet. So, uh, and then over the counter, that's about 10 inches over that counter line. That's 34 inch counter height we're going to use. My wife and I are both fairly short. Uh, so for the sink area, we're going to use a 34 inch height instead of 36. That also keeps the top of the sink just below the window. Um, at the top here, I had to reference the rain gutter on the outside, how far it would drop down um, to decide two inches from this metal uh, was where the top of the window needed to be. Um, so it'll still be mounted fairly close to the bottom of the rain guard outside, but that's about as tight as I could put it and be sure that I'd be able to get the window uh, put in properly. So. Um, Anyhow, uh, I'm going to go cut the plywood at this point. Okay, so I cut a notch, uh, or not a notch, but a chunk of the plywood out to match that profile. Uh, now I'm going to lay out the outlets here over in this part of the, uh, the wood while it's laying down flat. And uh, from there, I'll be able to um, take or probably bring the multi-tool out and try to carve the outlets out and see if I can get away with not using a jigsaw. Okay, I couldn't find my brother's jigsaw, so I ended up using this oscillating tool uh, to do the first outlet. Blades are a little dull, um, missing some teeth and whatnot, so it's not as easy, but uh, I'm going to get the next one done here. So I thought I might have uh, made a mistake, and then I went and got the outlet covers, and... Uh, no, it's okay. My spacing's all right. I thought maybe I had them too close for the outlet covers, depending on how big they were. But no, it looks okay. Just going to be a little, maybe a little odd to the eye because most people are used to seeing a double gang outlet. But uh, I kind of wanted them close together. So, but I was worried I was overlapping. So think about things like the trim pieces when you're building stuff. But I, I lucked out on that one. Okay, so I have this piece put up. The uh, outlet holes line up with what I expected. We got the corner meeting. I did have to modify it and see all the sawdust on the floor. I actually uh, didn't realize that the board below it was a full length board was not a full length board, so I had to modify this cut inside the bus after I brought the the wood in. So you know, back to the measure twice, cut once adage. You know, I forgot to check to make sure that was a full 96 inches before I referenced off of it. But all's well that ends well here. I didn't waste any, didn't waste much material, I should say. But right now, uh, what I'm going to do is drill for rivets here at the bottom so that I can hold the board in place. Uh, then I'm going to fish the wires through while I can still balance it, bringing it out a little bit so that I can uh, fish the wires through uh, into the outlets. That way I don't have to try to tape them to the paper to hold them in place. I don't think the tape sticks very well to that backer paper. But anyway, I'm going to get this board, uh, get this board uh, riveted, in riveted in place. I do need to go hook up the riveter. Okay, so I've got the wires run through the chase and uh, strung enough that the uh, box can be wired on that end. Probably wasting a little bit of wire, but doing that for my own convenience right now. So now I'm going to rivet. I've drilled a hole here. I'm going to rivet this board to the hat channel. Okay, so after my calves started burning here from crouching for a while, I've got this plywood mounted. I've got uh, on each hat channel at least three rivets. Um, except for this one over here where the alignment wasn't quite right. Um, 
but that's okay. This will get a, a cabinet built over it anyway. Um, so that'll help strengthen things. And we have the wires coming up here. They'll be in a chase tacked down behind the cabinet here. Um, you know, there will be a cabinet up top, I believe, or a shelf or something like that. But uh, the wires worked well. We've got them so that I can actually move them behind the wall so they're not pinched or anything. So that worked out well, just scooping out some of the insulation with the uh, oscillating tool. So I think uh, what I'm going to do now is start on the uh, next board. All right, so I used the oscillating tool to clear out an outlet spot here. I uh, got kind of lucky. I forgot all about that piece of metal there, but luckily it's not going to be in the way. So um, I've got this channel going. I'm going to punch this with a screwdriver to use this channel all the way up for the wire. So I didn't use the oscillating tool this time for the channel. It was just a razor blade and kind of ground it out with the back of the razor blade after I'd sliced it. That worked pretty well. So anyhow, I... Uh, I wanted to get that put in place, and then there'll be one more in the entertainment center area. I might do that with two outlets. I'm not sure. I, yeah, probably will do two because there will be a lot of computer equipment and things like that, video camera, etc., etc. So, um, you know, recording devices, etc. So I will. Uh, I'll probably put one on each side, one about here, and then one on the other side of the of where the window will be. That way when the TV goes up and down on linear actuators, it won't bump into the cords. Okay, so I have one, two, three outlets cut in the wood down low. And I will be running the wires up these chases. And after that, I'll put this full sheet of plywood up. And then we'll eventually cut a hole for the window in it. I've insulated the sides here. But the top piece is going to... Um, actually be above where the plywood will finish based on that sheet so uh, that'll eventually probably just get spray foamed and some chunks put in after we put the window in so anyhow uh, I'm gonna get this sheet put in place after I wire okay so I have the wires uh, roughed in and have enough length to get to the box now I'm gonna put this full sheet up and uh, get it riveted down Okay, so the progress today, I've got uh, the plywood put up on this front part of the driver's side of the bus. This seam here will be where a divider uh, is, is placed under an overcab bunk. Um, and it will also seal off the living area from the uh, drafts that would be caused by that front door there. So... Um, anyhow, I've got uh, this plywood up on this side, and a couple more days effort here over the weekend, I should have the rest of it done. Okay, so back at the bus, I'm going to work on uh, the other side here, front to back. I've got a little help today. Uh, it's kind of hard to hang these boards by yourself. This one was pretty challenging to balance while I drilled and riveted. So, uh, full sheet of plywood, that's pretty heavy. A little bit awkward so anyhow I'm gonna get at it first thing I need to do is kind of tidy up a little bit so I have a place to walk okay so with my son Jeremiah's help I have put the first piece in at the bottom there are no outlets on that this is going to be where the stove and fridge and uh, we have an L-shaped sort of countertop that's going to come out into this space right here um, the stove is actually 34 inches tall, so what I'm going to do now is mark a line on that paper at 34 inches with the flooring underneath. And uh, that'll be the countertop height. That'll inform us where to put the outlets I want. Two that are lower for the stove and the refrigerator to plug into. Um, and then I want above the countertop, I want a couple of outlets on this piece here for that breakfast bar. So that's what I'm going to do now is the layout for that to uh, start putting the wire chases in the foam board. Okay, so I've laid out where the outlets are going to go and I've scooped the wire chases out of the styrofoam. Made some notes about measurements down on this lower board. 
and so I've got the two outlets that are going to be above the counter where the uh, where the countertop's going to scoop out in an L shape. Uh, then we've got the outlet to plug the stove into. And we've got an outlet to plug a refrigerator into. And then uh, I've got an outlet for the uh, bathroom sink. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. A little dust in the air. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have like a, a slide out commode here, a uh, composting toilet. Uh, and a little bit of a closet, and it's going to have a um, like a lavatory sink that it slides away from. It'll be fairly narrow, um, but that'll be the toilet that's more forward in the bus. And then there's going to be another uh, composting toilet that's in the back, um, sort of uh, below the bed where the bed rises and falls. Uh, there'll be a commode there, uh, composting toilet with a sink. Uh, it'll be hidden as well. So, in essence, the uh, the privies on this bus are going to be kind of tucked away and hidden. They'll just look like regular cabinets. All right, so we're getting the layout done here. Got the corners drilled for jigsaw. And uh, I'm about to run the jigsaw, then we'll fish the wires and finish riveting. We put rivets on the bottom so it would still leave some space to pop out but we got to work quickly because the spray foam behind is setting up okay so we got all the rivets in this actually had to use a two by four with a little bit trimmed off to kind of pound the boards at the top to kind of wedge is what i'm trying to say so that the board would come in with spray foam expanding behind it was a bit of a challenge to get all the rivets in but uh we got it done got the wires run up over the ceiling with some clamps temporarily they're all kind of hanging down here to be put in the panel, but uh, that board's in. That's probably the toughest one to do in the whole bus with one, two, three, four, five different outlet holes. Okay, so with that board up, we've moved on here over the couch. We've got four rivets in this piece that uh, I ensured would align with the seam on that one because I want the top uh, front to back to have the same uh, plywood level. I'm going to put a chase in there with LED up lighting for uh, much of the length of the front of the bus. So uh, possibly in the back too. I have to think about that after I measure for the bed. But uh, anyhow, um, that's now riveted in place. We can put a full sheet in behind it after I throw some insulation up beside the, uh, you know, on the edges of the where the window is going to go. So we're going to get at it here. Okay, so thanks to my son Jeremiah, we got lots done here today. Coming back at it tomorrow, but we've got the main boards here on the front half of the bus done. Have some to do in the back, but in the back there are fewer wall outlets, so it should be easier to deal with. This board for the kitchen and uh, lavatory area was a bit challenging uh, with five outlets on one board but we got it done so uh, another thing to note is just uh, that first piece will definitely help secure the couch um, it'll along with uh, wood that's going to be on the bottom we'll have wood down the bottom that's kind of coating the inside like a box that will uh, secure that to the metal um, the plywood sides, you'll see later, but the plywood sides are going to strengthen the couch uh, so that seat belts would actually be effective. Okay, so I'm back at the bus here. Uh, my agenda for today is to get the uh, back half uh, set up with the plywood walls. So hopefully that goes quicker. There's fewer outlets to wire up back there on the walls. So we'll get at it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is uh, cutting a notch out to go underneath the platform uh, in the back and uh, taking some measurements, drilled some holes. I jigsawed part of it and uh, now I'm going to run the circular saw for these lines here. Okay, so I've got the notch cut out. Now I'm going to take this over to the bus. I'll put some insulation in where it needs to go, hit the spray foam and get this uh, fastened into place. Okay, so I have that board cut and ready to go in here. I just need to put some insulation in where I was not able to
to do that, I'm going to need to move this insulation out of my way. I think I'm going to, going to just stack it in a pile in the center. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the center back here. So, anyway, that's what I'm going to do next. Clear the work area. All right, so I've uh, wedged foam board in there. Now I'm going to hit it with a spray can and get that uh, piece that I cut put in place, riveted in place. Okay, so I've got that piece riveted in place. And I've left the right amount of clearance for flooring to go in under there. So now I'm going to put a full sheet up on this part of the wall right here. So I'm actually running fairly low on rivets, so I'll probably just put four rivets in right now. And uh, I'll have to go back and buy more rivets. Story of my life with this build. I've, I, I always underestimate the number of rivets I'm going to go through. Okay, so I've got this sheet uh, put in place here. And how does one person rivet a full sheet of plywood to a wall? Well, you got to use a cheater. I moved this down at the top as I did the top rivets. And you'll notice I cut like a five or seven degree angle on the end of the board with the, with the circular saw. And then I've got a block that uh, I used here to kind of create additional spacing and it pushes the, pushes the board into the wall using the other wall's strength. So uh, sometimes you have to get a little inventive when working alone, but yeah, it, uh, it's up. The only challenge now is I'm out of freaking rivets. So I'm gonna have to order some more. Okay, so I'm back at the bus here. I did uh, order more rivets. They won't be here for a little while, but I got some sheet metal screws for temporary use so I can keep putting walls up. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna keep putting some plywood up here. Uh, need to add insulation there on that side. Um, I need to trim the seat of the, and it's hard to see, but that top piece there needs trimmed. Uh, I want it to be beside the plywood, not underneath the plywood. That needs to be removable for engine access. And uh, then on the other side here, I will also start working on plywood over there. But before that, I got to move all this insulation back out of the way again. Okay, so it's uh, a wintry wonderland of a day here. I got snow all over my plywood overnight here. Uh, so I brushed that off. Now I'm going to cut a piece for the bottom. Actually, I'm going to cut two pieces for the bottom rails in the back. They're going to have to be um, highly modified to fit the curvature of the back bench. So it's probably going to take quite a while to do these two pieces. Okay, so I've just removed the bottom of the bench seat here. I'm going to need to cut the cut the ends of this piece in the back. These are uh, the foam pieces. We're going to need to cut those an inch and a half, three quarter on each side, uh, maybe slightly more than that so that they fit back in. I'll probably do just an inch on each side just to make sure that it's um, got enough clearance. doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of a gap there because I'm going to cap these with other wood. Uh, and then cushions and whatnot. But uh, anyhow, uh, the next step here is to get this shape measured out and templated onto that piece that I just cut um, so that I can use the jigsaw and circular saw to make it fit uh, the exact dimension. So I'm going to measure everything off of that bottom rail and the bottom corner over here uh, for reference. So the first measurement's going to be how far that 90 degree piece of foam sticks up and how far it is from the end of the board there. Um, and that will be the measurement for the top of the seat uh, or the top of the metal there where, this, where the top of, top of this bench uh, is in line with that board. Uh, so from there, um, we'll measure over here and then figure out this angle and that dimension at the top although that dimension at the top may have to uh, that's going to be probably the most inaccurate of all of them if I had to guess um, it may be slightly off but uh, anyhow I'm gonna get at it taking measurements 
Okay, so I brought this piece of uh, wood that I cut into the bus. It's easier to make cuts when I'm not getting snowed on, so I'll clean up the sawdust later inside here. But anyhow, I'm going to do the layout here, and uh, I'll get this thing marked up and make the cuts, and uh, hopefully it snaps right in. And then I intend to use the same piece. I'm going to dry fit it on the other side of the bus and make sure that that's exactly the same. If it is, I'll use it as a template to cut the piece for that side. Okay, so I used the angle tool that uh, Troy, one of the viewers, had recommended to check the angle on the back of the bench here with this wood. And uh, looks like it got it right with just the measurements, so that was handy. Just double check before I cut. Okay, so I think I've got all the layout done on this board. I've got my cut lines drawn, and uh, with any luck here, it'll actually fit the first time. Otherwise, I might have to trim it a bit, but uh, we're going to get this thing cut out. Okay, so on this uh, layout here, I've got the corners drilled out so that I can use both the circular saw and the jigsaw here to cut the shape. Um, of course, the corner or the, uh, the holes are to allow the jigsaw to turn if I need to. Uh, change directions. Okay, so I have the basic shape cut out here. Hopefully it slaps right in place and also fits the other side. We shall see in a minute. Okay, so I have it dry fit and uh, I'm going to call that pretty good. Good enough anyway. A um, little bit more gap here than I wanted, but this is also going to have three-quarter ply on the top deck here. Uh, well, half to three quarter, so no harm, no foul on that. And uh, I finished it right where I can still get a piece from the other side, uh, riveted. Got enough, enough there to rivet when I put the piece on this side of the uh, hat channel. So I'm going to call that success and uh, try it on the other side, and then I will cut a second one using this one as a template. Uh, to go on the other side. Well, holy moly, if symmetry isn't a beautiful thing, this fit right in and uh, pretty much went right up against that uh, that uh, scoop for the air inlet. So, perfect fit. I will use it as a template for another one. So I'm going to go cut a piece outside at 24 and 3 quarters width, bring it inside. First, I'm going to trim these seat pieces and get them ready to be put back in place. Um, I think I'm going to trim them as uh, just about seven eighths on each side. Hopefully that makes them fit nice and snug but not too tight against the plywood once it's in place. Okay, so I've marked this end. I'm going to trim these uh, foam pieces that are meant for the rear couch area, lounging area. Um, so these pieces are uh, going to get trimmed 7 8 on each end. Uh, I already brought in, with my daughter's help, a couple of sheets of plywood um, so that we can finish, or I can finish the back here with the last full sheet on each side. So uh, we'll keep at it, and uh, hopefully I'll have the walls pretty much, uh, the plywood walls pretty much done on the sides of the bus. Okay, so I've trimmed about seven eighths off of each side of both of these OSB insulation boards for the rear bench seat or rear rear lounging area. Um, it's kind of funny. You can see my breath. You can see my breath here in the bus. I actually did buy a diesel heater that I've yet to install. I think I'm going to put it down through the bottom of the seat here. Um, coming from the engine bay when I install it, it'll go on this side of the engine bay over here and get piped under the under the seat there in probably in in here about two feet or so uh, as long as it's out of the way inside. So that'll happen soon once the snowfall is melted and the ground's a little more dry. If I get a break in the weather, I'll get that installed so I can stay warm in here all winter. But uh, anyhow, um, next step is to get the other piece cut for this 
and use that as a template to cut the other side and then we'll fasten uh, we'll fasten those pieces along with the full sheets and I've got to figure out outlet placement there's going to be an outlet up high on this panel here there's going to be a window on that section there'll be an outlet fairly high here so that when the bed is raised up there's uh, accessible power uh, and then I'll have an outlet on each side down lower here I'm thinking probably right here sort of in front of the lounge seat or uh, it might even go yeah probably right here on each of these I have to look at where the metal is down there to see if it fits but uh, that way when you're lounging you can plug in a device or or whatever you know, laptop us usb cord whatever you whatever you need to plug in but uh anyhow uh, that's the plan i'll keep at it okay so i used this board to uh mark with a sharpie on this one i added a little bit of length to the end because that way it will actually be up against that shroud uh for the uh, air intake and uh so it'll be a little bit more snug that way, give me more room to rivet. But uh, at this point, I'm going to cut the second piece, and then I'll be able to start putting these pieces up, marking outlets, etc. So I actually decided uh, that these pieces are most likely not going to have outlets on them, that they're going to be just above the metal on this uh on this next well i don't know i might cut them out at the very top but uh but i'm not putting them down below that piece of metal there uh on the wall i don't want the romex to get pinched so anyhow um putting out what's in will likely happen here at the uh at the end of this one okay so i got the second piece cut i actually did mark each piece at the top here where I'm going to put the outlets. I'm going to go ahead and cut them while the boards are sitting here. Um, they actually uh, just need traced with the outlet itself and then I'll, I'll use the jigsaw on them with the drill. So that will make it easy and I'll be able to use a screwdriver with that little bit of a wire chase that needs built at the top there and uh, then cut up the cut up the rest of uh, rest of this insulation to accommodate the Romex. Okay, so this side actually fits like a glove as well. So that was pretty fortunate. All right, so I've got this one riveted in, except for the last rivet behind that pile of insulation. I'll have to shift that to the side. Uh, next, I'll be able to carve the channel for the Romex, and then I'll lay out a channel for the, uh, well, yeah, I'll lay out a channel for the other um, for the other outlet. Although it might also be fairly close to the top of that sheet, up fairly high, so that when the bed's in the up the uh, the, the high position on the lift on the uh, on the uh, linear actuators that uh, will eventually get installed, that the outlet will not be uh, brushed into by the mattress and cords broken, etc. So I'm going to put it up fairly tall fairly high up, um, probably toward the top of that sheet of plywood. So I shouldn't actually need to build much of a channel for that. But this one will have a channel going straight up. Okay, so I'm back at the bus. My camera died yesterday, but I was able to get this very back section up. I wired that outlet. There's going to be another outlet that's going to go at the very top here, maybe with about one inch below here. This will be so that when the bed's in the up position, uh, we're able to charge devices or plug in a laptop or whatever. So uh, anyhow, uh, this side's done as well. And there's just a little bit more on the sidewalls to do on that section there. We're doing that now. But first, I'm going to clean things up a bit. I've got so much insulation, dust everywhere. Um, Get this bench cleared off and put these pieces of wood back in place. Hopefully they fit really well since I've trimmed them. Hey 
Okay, so finally finished putting the plywood up on both sides of the interior. So we've got plywood all the way around here. And uh, I did just pick up my automotive lights, so I'm going to be wiring those this weekend as long as it's not raining outside or snowing. And I'm also going to be wiring, even if it snows or rains, I'll be wiring the uh, inside outlets. I do have to add outlets, like I mentioned, up at the top here on both sides. But uh, yeah, progress. I'm happy about it.